Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian, I am a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and on this show I react to comedy music from the perspective of a comedy musician. Because that's what I am, and that's what this is, and that's what I do, and that's why you're here, and that's why you don't trust a rhinoceros. I have no idea what that means. Anyway, this week I'm reacting to the fairy tale rap cipher by Freshy Canal, featuring Dan Bull, Epic Lloyd, Keyblade, The Stupendium, and more. If this is your first time joining us, yes, hello. My name is Insanian, as I said before, and I react to comedy music from the perspective of somebody themselves who does comedy music. What that means to you is that I'm going to be pausing the video. Kind of often, actually, so I'm not talking over the jokes in the song. And sometimes that also means talking how the video works with the song lyrics, how they interact together, how they complement each other. Sometimes I'm explaining jokes, because that's always a popular thing to do. Talking about turns of phrase in the lyrics, how the bars are sometimes, if it's a rap cipher like this one. Uh, and sometimes it's just me sitting back and laughing my damn head off. It's a crapshoot, whatever you're going to get, but I think it's a good time either way. If this is the kind of thing that you enjoy, you know, it'd be nice if you like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. And if you really want to help the channel out, well, consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get to see these videos early, get my music and comedy early, and all sorts of other cool stuff like that. But anyway, all of that out of the way... Let's dive into this video. There's a lot of people on this cipher. They've all written the verses themselves, so uh, let's give them their dues, shall we? It's an eight-minute song, so it's going to be a lot to go through. Once upon a time, there lived a boy who'd never age. He spent his time writing fire hooks upon a page. I think... I think that's Freest as the announcer there. I think. I may have seen that in the credits. I don't remember all the names in the credits, but that one I, I remember. She chilled with those who chilled and weak as pussies got the boot. He bandaged cat against the wall for all the king's mad men to shoot. Through each one he went to riding, spitting rhymes and nary capping. Notoriously big and bad, twas not your granny's rapping for him. <laughs> been to quell the giants who were stalking through the night. His tails were loosey goosey, but his bars were fucking tight. Love that intro. That's phenomenal. Got a ticket to vacation on the taxi cab. I can offer this you a fresh planet can. I'm crossing a couple stars on my travel plan. Grab my hand. You could tell we're looking to never. Okay, so already Freshy is is out the gate spitting fast. Got a ticket to vacation, I'm the taxi cab. I can offer you a paradise this planet can't. I'm crossing a couple stars on my travel plan. One of the most popular lines in Peter Pan's book is, second star to the right and straight on till morning. It's how you you're, pick your destination. Uh, and grab my hand, you could say I'm moonwalking to Neverland. Neverland Ranch is what Michael Jackson's home was called, and he moonwalked uh, famously what he did yeah and he was always had peter pan syndrome always wanted to be a kid and there's a lot more to unpack there given the alleged allegations that are have happened since uh his uh, untimely demise but we won't get into that here needless to say things needless to say things great commentary ian i'm on a wild ride already if you want to settle beef, go to Cannibal Cove. C cannibals eat humans, and uh, human meat is a thing. <laughs> Only living where my shadow is thrown. Yeah, Peter Pan lost his shadow. It detached from his body. It ran away. It had a mind of its own. So, uh, yes. But I lied to the crooks And I don't book a flight I just fly out the book And I don't give a shit What your parents have cooked I got bigger fish to fry The way past leaving hooks Yeah, yeah. okay uh, I was waiting for a, a Captain Hook line uh, I don't book a fly, I just fly out the book. I don't give a shit what your parents have cooked. I got bigger fish to fry Going back to the what your parents cooked The way pans leaving hooks You fry fish in a pan and Take it down from the hook also, Peter Pan and Captain Hook. Bleh. And also hooks of a song. Yeah. 
Yeah, young girl on a friendship track with a nine to five Shit, I got friendship like I'm on a flight with pirates I'm not built for a job, it's license I built on my own fucking private island I got friends shipwrecking when I fight with pirates. <laughs> you got all your friends shipwrecked. You got all your friendships wrecked. I got friends shipwrecking. Great flip there. Wouldn't have a hook if you didn't have me. He is singing on the opening of his bars. Epic Lloyd from... Epigraph Battles of History, coming in as Captain Hook. Bangarang, uh, coming in from the movie titled Hook. Uh, the, the Steven Spielberg movie with Robin Williams as a grown-up Peter Pan. So that's that was from that film. Black mustache and a dapper look. I'm the feather in the cap of the seven seas. You wouldn't have a hook if you didn't have me. It's great, great bars already. I don't know, even starting out of this, uh, if I would consider... Peter Pan and Captain Hook, a fairy tale. It it's it's a book. I mean, some fairy tales I uh, could be could possibly be a fairy tale. It's not something I would have thought of as a fairy tale myself personally. I think fairy tales like well, I guess yeah, I guess stuff like Hans Christian Andersen and stuff would would be considered fairy tales too. So I guess uh, Hans Christian Andersen didn't do this. This was Lewis. No, it wasn't Lewis Carroll. Who the hell wrote Peter Pan? Somebody's going to tell me in the in the comments, I'm sure. I can't remember now. But yes, I guess technically this would be a fairy tale then. I'm questioning my own theories. That's what happens on here. I'm the Brooklyn Dodgers of open waters. Roger Waters, a Charlie Roger. The Brooklyn Dodgers of open water. I think in Hook, when Peter Pan's kids are kidnapped by Captain Hook and they teach him baseball, they dress up as the Dodgers. I think that's what happens. The Roger Waters of Jolly Rogers. Roger Waters is from Pink Floyd. Uh, Jolly Rogers is the flag they, uh, that pirates fly. Uh, I don't know what the Roger Waters of Jolly Roger means. Yeah. Oh, because he's singing a song, I guess, about being a pirate. There, see, I got there immediately. Whatever. I love how he's sung a hook to the song in his verse twice. Great. I'm getting Lost Boys piece. The the crew of Peter Pan's friends is called the Lost Boys. Uh, I'm getting Lost Comma Boys. It yeah, but I'm also getting the Lost Boys, capturing them, fighting them, what have you. <laughs> Animation in this is really cool. So Jack and the Beastalk is Little Flex. Fee five fo fuck. That's a great way to start a verse. <laughs> I smell the flow of a thief you all know. That's yeah, okay. Like, little flakes coming out like really throwing heat. <laughs> Whose green only goes up putting seeds in a foe's mum, cause that means I'm a grower. The seeds made Jack's beanstalk grow, but also euphemisms. Jack's beanstalk grow. A grower, not a shower. You get what I'm saying? You understand the euphemisms, the innuendos that are at play here? I'm not going to fully explain them because... You can look up what I just said. <laughs> the Kinder Surprise Egg. The Golden Goose's Egg. Sure, that's a Kinder Surprise Egg. 
Man, there's uh there's there's good stuff. Took five beans and got high. Technically actually elevation, not stoned. Uh, and it's not I whom tripping, because he trips the giant to kill it. Yeah, okay, great bars. I don't know who Jay Che is, but they're playing the Golden Goose. Stepping into the booth, give him goosebumps. Great, yeah, it's a thing you get from geese. Random, random reference to... Uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory leave him in the trash chute like Veruca. Veruca Salt. Uh, who goes down the trash chute. Uh, that's a great line. The Feathered Veteran is also a great, just, simple line. It just pleases the ear. I'm a goosebumps. Leave him in the trash chute like Veruca. Don't mess with the Feathered Veteran with the bread that you're gonna get. Shoot it off of the gun of goosebumps. Cash in the cool PM with the appearances. Everything. I like down 24 characters. All of my plus is your net with a less in this bird. Yes, the Golden Goose from. Uh, Jack and the Beanstalk, I didn't, it just occurred to me, everything I lay down is 24 carat, because the golden goose lays the golden eggs. The golden eggs are made of gold. Ha. Uh, all of my bills see your net worth is less than this bird. Yeah, okay, because the golden goose is literally money. Making money. Literally making money. Uh, yeah. Cash in the coop, yeah. That's... But you don't don't give bread to to to, bur to ducks or geese. They, it's actually not good for their digestive systems. Just a little safety tip from me to you. That's a those another set of great lines. I'm sorry, I keep pausing, but I'm I don't want to miss the next lines. But uh, gander at the gander. A, a, a gander is a. Is it a type of goose, I think? But to gander is to, to look at, to gawk at it. But gander at the gander, gander also meaning a goose, a goose's gander, a goose ha I think a, a gander is a part of a goose or a flock of geese or something. I don't, I know it's associated with geese. That's what I get from this. But gander is look, but gander is also associated with geese. That's why gander at the gander. Uh, I'm the foul-minded Midas, so mind your manners. Foul-minded Midas. Midas had the golden touch. Everything he touched turned to gold. It's another fairy tale. Uh, and uh, this goose literally births it. Making money. <laughs> Stunks to the moon, full of memes. All right, sure. Uh... <laughs> Different league than some other ducking Scrooge. Scrooge McDuck had a vault full of gold that he swam through, which uh, it's not physically possible in reality, uh, uh, but it's a cartoon, so who cares? Uh, uh, original G, that's Goose. MFing Goose. Yeah. Goose. Okay, Little Red Riding Hood from Holla G C G. Uh, Holla C. I almost said Holla G C because dyslexia is a thing. Holla C G as Little Red Riding Hood here coming in. Canine more like bull with an off fixation. I I feel like I'm I'm missing something there. I I there there's a I feel like maybe there's an innuendo there that I'm not quite grasping in this, but uh, yeah, not 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 quite fully grasping that one. I 
Thought illness must be raging, like, why does grandma look like a wolf? She must be sick. Yeah, no, it's a wolf in disguise, obviously. Big eyes, big ears, big teeth. It's better to eat you with all that ish. <laughs> just red leftover. <laughs> All right, I, I, I like that, because Little Riding Hood, the red removed from Little Red Riding Hood, just red left over, meaning the blood is all that's left. Very cool. Oh, oh of course, Schwabity is playing the big bad wolf. Of course. It's not a bear, but it's close enough. Lots of uh, lots of dog or wolf puns there. Here, no bark, but I'm a bite. He's the lone wolf. Got no partner in this crime. Being alone, just by himself. Uh, ain't paying for this meal like my card has been declined. That's a great line, just on its own. Master of disguise. Red did not recognize a wolf in Grandma's clothing, so he's a master of disguise. That's great. What big fangs just to kill you all the better, brah? Gray lines. <laughs> The wolf is suddenly pink. Schwabity's uh, bear is always pink, and it's. It, it, I think he has new hats that are pink now. Uh, great, fantastic. Let's let's keep it on theme. It's great. Ooh, when the teeth gleam at you, that's a muzzle flash. That's a, that's a killer bar right there. Uh, teeth gleaming, or the flash of the fangs. The, f the fangs are located in the wolf's muscle muzzle, but a muzzle flash is also you know the flash of a of a gun muzzle. But the the maw of a wolf is also called a muzzle. Uh, so when they're flashing their teeth, that's a muzzle flash. That's a great bar. Wow. Uh, never hunt in packs. I'm the alpha coming with a cunning plan. Uh, the whole thing about alpha males has been, like, the person who, who originally made that doctorate about wolves having an alpha went back and went, actually, now that I look again, that's not a thing that's in their culture at all. But uh, alpha males has been, like, become a term uh, that is widely disproven by people who call themselves alphas anyway. But that's neither here nor there. It's just a song I'm not talking about in general. Cut you down to size like a lumberjack, bitch. Cut you down to size like a lumberjack. I was waiting for a Monty Python thing right there after that. But it, I think it's a lumberjack who comes and saves Red from the bowels of the wolf in the fairy tale. Trying to remember all these fairy tale things. Yeah. I didn't say much during Red's verse. Uh, it was it was fairly straightforward as far as what happens to Red in the in the story. So. Hola, here comes the <laughs> Alright, I don't know who Keyblade is, but Puss in Boots, fantastic. Uh, and also it's sounding a little bit like Antonio Banderas' Puss in Boots here, uh, which, uh, sure, why not? Uh, I don't know if the, uh, the newer Puss in Boots uh, movie had come out by the time this came out. This is a couple months old, so I don't know if that was out then or not. Whatever. <laughs> I make a track sound good, call me Fruity Loops. Uh, for those who may not know, uh, Fruity Loops is a beat making program you know, for a computer. Uh, especially, especially way, way back in the day, uh, amateur musicians would use Fruity Loops all the time to make beats. Uh, a lot of early, 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 early era nerdcore was made using Fruity Loops um, before uh, many people knew producers or, or became producers themselves. 
uh, some people. It's a it's a good beginner program for making beats, Fruity Loops. That's that's a good line. Uh, I don't speak Spanish, so all over my head. Don't know what that says. Um, something about a trio of rats, I think. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so much I can even make an ogre look smaller. All right, we're bringing Shrek, the version of Puss in Boots from the Shrek films and their solo movies, into this. Damn, bro. <laughs> Spitting so sick like hairballs. Uh, Zorro, yeah. Antonio Banderas played both Zorro and Puss in Boots, so there is definitely the correlation there already with the sword and everything. I think they kind of built that up in the Shrek movies. So. Uh, <laughs> Tengo un alma bandolera, mi encanto de banderas. So there's something about weapons and Antonio Banderas in that line that I can kind of glean context clues. Again, don't speak Spanish, so. Also, Banderas also could be bandanas, maybe? Maybe I'm wrong. I was thinking because the, the next line that follows it keeps my red flags low. Banderas keeps my red flags low, meaning bandanas instead of red flags. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking too far into that, but it's possible. Maybe. <laughs> Alright. Eric the Audible is Humpty Dumpty. Don't know who Eric the Audible is either, but uh, I, I've been impressed by all the people I'm not familiar with in this, so... The yoked goat. Yolk, because eggs have yolks. And Humpty Dumpty is an Eggman. Not Dr. Eggman, though. That's different. Egg buns. Yes. That's what I've been hoping for. Uh, yeah. Uh... They say walking on eggshells is when you're trying to be uh, tender in your stepping and not trying to, like, you know, cause any commotion. So you're walking on eggshells, and uh, meaning, like, any f wrong step could cause a problem or cause commotion or break something and hurt your foot, but also the person waking them up or whatever if you're walking on eggshells, trying not to wake someone up, that kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's an idiom, uh, but, you know... Who's the best tell? Tell them not to step on an eggshell. Obviously, don't... Step loosely around me is what he's trying to say, basically. But metaphorically. Ooh. Alright, that's... That's just a great line having to do practically with nothing. Because I'm giving no fucks like a tip of a friar's dick. Because friars are religious uh, people, basically not quite monks, but you know, they are, they've, they've taken a vow of celibacy, so no fucks are given with them. Uh, old school, every rhyme of mine's inscribed in papyrus. Uh, you know, early version of paper. Uh, if you don't vibe with it, take a dive off the highest bricks. Well, that's what happened to Humpty Dumpty. He fell from the castle wall. Because <laughs> uh, all of the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. Why were the horses trying to put the, the egg man back together? I've always wondered that about that nursery rhyme. I, what? Why, why were you having the horses try? There's been a, a tweet that's gone around, I think. And I think... Uh, I think they actually brought it up on Game Grumps not long ago, is like, uh, oh, we've tried, your highness, and we just cannot put Humpty together again. Let the horses try. What? Yeah, something like that. You know, it's very rude to sit down All right, I recognize the voice immediately. That's a stupendium as the Mad Hatter. Gather 
his men Tell him Humpty is back and he's cracked once again You know it's very rude to sit down at somebody's cipher uninvited <laughs> Here comes a hatter Never been so silly, a milliner and habitual picnic around like crumpets and cricket But it does mention my British a young liberty gym and we are in heaven to visit it well, alrighty then. As predicted with Stupendium, uh, Fast and Furious Rhymes and Wordplay Galore, I need to run that back immediately. No matter, here comes the haver, never been so silly, a Milner and habitual picnicker. Uh, Milner, I think, is, I, I don't know if you can hear, but one of my cats is going crazy out there. Uh, I think a milliner is a is a hatter or a hat maker or someone who works on haberdashery, and habitual picnicker uh, in the Alice in Wonderland. They're having a, a picnic with tea, a tea party picnic, uh, when Alice comes upon them. I'm like crumpets and cricket, but just a smidgen more Britisher. Crumpets meaning the biscuits they have with tea, I think. Uh, cricket, meaning the the sport of cricket. Smidgen more Britisher. I don't know how you can get more British than crumpets and cricket, but sure. The just stupendium working the phrase "flibberty gibbet" into a into a bar is that wins for me already. Just working the phrase "flibberty gibbet" into it, it's a. Uh, it's a nonsense word, but it's very Lewis Carroll-esque in the Alice in Wonderland stories. Uh, things like Flipperty Gibbet and the Jabberwocky and all these other weird words. Uh, I don't know that it's uh, created by Lewis Carroll, the word Flipperty Gibbet. I've heard it... There was a comedy musician, actually, who went by the name Flipperty Gibbet. Uh, I think their song was You Must Give Me Beef or something like that. Uh, I don't remember anymore. Uh, but yeah, w uh, weird word to fit in there. Multisyllabic word, long word, uh, to fit into a bar. Bravo. Shrinking or embiggening nibbles. Uh, the uh, drink me, eat me things would make Alice grow or shrink, and apparently they were using that on the food. Uh... My sanity's a drink in a thimble. Meaning that his sanity is so small, he's so mad as a hatter. Uh, mad meaning crazy, insane, what have you. Uh, my sanity's a drink in a thimble. A thimble is so small, a drink from a thimble would not be very much at all. So saying your sanity is equal to a drink in a thimble, meaning is very small sanity. Not very, not very sane is what he's saying. Uh, the hatter. Oh, that's an amazing bar. All right. So they've done, uh, cause I'm raving when I'm at the, at the writing desk and one of Mad Hatter's nonsense riddles, because they talk about spilling my riddles and sipping a little earlier in the verse. Uh, what's the difference between a raven and a writing desk? That is a riddle that I don't think has an answer, but it's from Alice in Wonderland. It's one of the riddles the Mad Hatter asks Alice. Uh, so yeah, so I'm raving when I'm up at the writing desk because uh, they're saying as a rapper, I'm raving when writing my bars. Uh, but what's the difference between a raven and a writing desk? Fitting that into there like that in that scheme. Brilliant. I'd say I'm mercurial, that just means his mind's a mess. Uh, yeah, I think that also has to do with, like... Uh, I think it's hidden to that in, in Alice in Wonderland that he was mad from drinking mercury. I think. Uh, I read that theory somewhere once and it kind of stuck in my crawl. There's the Jabberwocky, Mr. T, as in the drink of tea, because uh, it's a tea party at the picnic, yes. Very 
a very merry unbirthday to you. Any day that is not your birthday is your unbirthday. It's the half waypoint usually, or some. I think it's the halfway point where that's the half birthday. I don't know anymore. But yes, another reference to the uh, Disney version, the very merry unbirthday. And I think the voice that Stupendium was doing there was reminiscent of the Disney Mad Hatter. A uh, phenomenal verse as the Mad Hatter there. Oh, hello. Don't worry, you're not in danger. I may be a stranger, but you're even stranger. Okay, so we got Dan Bull as a Cheshire Cat. Perfect. Uh, already, I may be a stranger, but you're even stranger. Getting into those weird wordplay that, that uh, the, the Alice in Wonderland books have. Yeah. In case you forget, here's a basic refresher. One, I'm a cat. Two, I came here from Cheshire. It's a great pleasure. Yeah, the cat is from Cheshire. The Cheshire grin has been uh, associated with the cat since then, uh, but not... I don't know what I'm saying anymore in that one. Never mind. Scratch that. Forget it. Should to be making your acquaintance. Quay conversation is acquainted entertainment. Come to Wonderland and you'll understand that it's enlightening down the thundercloud. Enlightening under thunderclouds. Like lightning. Lightning and thunder, enlightening under thunder clouds. That's that's good. A step at a time, I don't require to finish to open up your mind. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, it'll be fun. Strange, you got nothing quite. Can't cut your tongue. Cat, the Cheshire cat got your tongue, meaning uh, you you uh, cat got your tongue is meaning you're at a loss for words. Sometimes you're not saying anything because the metaphorical cat has run away with your tongue. Uh, I don't know where the phrase originally comes from, but having the Cheshire Cat ask you that is whimsical indeed because the is a cat, you see, because uh, puns and fun. Alright. Ooh! My teeth aren't jacked, I'm just dentally built. Uh... Meaning, you know, his, his teeth aren't... Because the Cheshire Cat has such a huge grin. Uh, so, thinking... So, I mean, saying his teeth aren't jacked, not giant muscular teeth. I'm just very well built dentally in the mouth, in the dentures, in the dentist area. That's not a thing that people say. Uh, and whereas the line between ingenious and mentally ill is just an amazing line. Uh, yeah. What's 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 the what's the what's the line between genius and insanity? Absolutely. That's why I never pretend to be real. Whoa. Yeah, because he keeps disappearing, and we're not sure if he's actually there, taunting and motivating Alice or not. Whoa. There's so many great bars and incredible flow throughout this whole thing, but these last two verses from Stoops and, and Dan, phenomenal. I don't know who Ronnie Pickering is. Uh, just that, that little couplet there, still deliver Ridlin as if it's medicine for fidgetin. Ritalin, as in riddling, but Ritalin is also a medicine for people with... I don't even know if they even do Ritalin anymore, but it was for people with uh, ADHD, I think. Uh, so it is a medicine for fidgeting. Uh, but uh, r delivering riddles as if they're medicine for fidgeting, but Ritalin was a medicine for fidgeting. Uh, you don't want to hear the conspiracies I'm complicit in. Fidgeting and complicit in. Man, already. The mystery is viscous the way it's thickening. With a mystery, a thickening mystery, meaning it, like it's getting more mysterious as it goes by, but thickening something, making it more viscous, making it more thick. Uh, it's so good. Uh, those lines, fantastic. <laughs> Perfect. Pickling your mind like I'm sticking it in brine. Like you would pickle something, like turning a cucumber into a pickle, or pickling 
eggs, cabbage, whatever, when you would a thing that you would pickle. Uh, you put it in brine to pickle it. Uh, rewind, see how many hidden messages you find. Uh, it's what I was just doing, trying to decipher the bars there. How the... Uh, yeah? Hmm. Wow. That was phenomenal. And going out with a very ERB end of season <laughs> rack here. <laughs> That's phenomenal. That was really, really well done, y'all. Oh, that was, this came out like December. <laughs> Wow. Okay, and now it's all the special thanks and the uh, of the people who were involved and patrons and all sorts of other cool stuff like that. That was phenomenal. Uh, it, it eight minute song turned into a thirty five plus minute reaction. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, wow, that that was really really great. Just gonna keep going here. Anything else? Nope. Just a couple seconds of nothing else. Alright. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. And if you really want to help the channel out, consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get to see these things early, these videos, get my music and videos early, and get their name in the credits like the people over here and all sorts of other cool stuff like that. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, here's another one, so just sing along. If you're in the mood, a parody song that was written about food.